Dobar dan, draga publiko. Dobrodošli na naše sljedeće predavanje gospodina Pitera Santa. Jako nam je drago da je Full House jer će biti jako, jako zanimljivo predavanje. Petar Santo je, mogli bismo to reći, prava medijska ličnost i to kompletna medijska ličnost nove generacije koja voli i kameru, i publiku, i pozornicu, jako se dobro tu snalazi, a i publika voli njega, što ćete vrlo uskoro vidjeti. Što se njegove karijere tiče, on je počeo kad je bio na fakultetu, do duše to nije bilo tako davno jer on je stvarno jako mlad, tad je već postao predsjednik studenske vlade, kako se to zvalo, počeo je nastupati na raznim TED govorima, došao je na Forbesovu top listu najuspješnijih mađarskih studenta i mladih ljudi i općenito je vrlo brzo došao je do svoje televizijske emisije, radio je po brojnim medijskim kanalima, danas je još k tome naravno i influencer, pored svega toga održava i razna predavanja po festivalima, savjetuje korporacije oko svojih strategija i definitivno je prava osoba koja nam može pomoći da saznamo kako je to izgraditi svoj osobni brand. On će imati predavanje od nekih 30 minuta, a nakon toga slijedi najzanimljiviji dio. On je osmislio jednu jako slatku i jako uzbudljivu radionicu za koju će trebati volontere. Ja vas molim, nemojte se sramiti, 30 minuta slušajte, a onda se svakako javite, jer će imati, kaže, we'll do magic on the stage, tako da ćete imati priliku i se vi popesti ovdje i sa njim pomoći realizirati poantu zapravo njegove priče. Jako jednostavno, nemate se čega bojati, ali Evo, preporučam prvo da poslušamo predavanje, a onda ćemo vidjeti ko je hrabar. Jedan veliki aplauz za Petara Santoa! Thank you very much. All right, hi everyone. Can you hear me? All right, we have a full house and I, I was counting, I understood four words. Forbes, magic, festival, and there was a four, I already forgot it. So thank you very much for the warm... Uh, welcome. Um, I see some seats here, so I, I see you guys standing there. I see like, I don't know, four or five seats if you want to come along. And we're going to do some magic, of course, and some crazy parts. So there are like two, two parts. Uh, first, I'm going to give you a talk and uh, like a food for thought, what's going to happen. And then next, I will need volunteers for that and, you know, the crazy people. So for starter, I, I won't be holding my, the camera all the time, but I, I want to see how crazy we can get. So, you know, like the selfie kind of way. And I really want you to shout and do everything. And let, let's, ju let, let's just warm up a little bit. So let's do it now. Yeah. Those are my people, love it, thank you very much. I was scared, we were talking before that, um, are you guys gonna be participating in all of this or, or just you know listening? So if you can uh, put up my presentation, awesome, thank you very much. So yeah, what would be the craziest and most memorable thing I could do, like something that, that you would say that that was the dopest of all of, all of the weekend. Do you give me any idea? I, I, I just, I just want to brainstorm here. Shout in. What would be the craziest thing I could do here that would say, okay, that, that I will remember? Strip? Someone said strip? <laughs> yeah? What else? Some exercise? What exercise? I, I, I will think about strip. Sorry? Stand on, stand on my hand, okay, but then you guys will need to take pictures and upload it and tag it, okay, if I will do that. I think I, I haven't done it un, since high school because uh, in high school I tried to break. I couldn't do it. I don't know if I can do it now, but I will try that. All right. I can, I can do better. I, I, I got this. No. <laughs> No, it was worse. Okay. Any other idea? Sing? You don't want me to sing. We can sing together later. Is there anyone? Actually, you sing, so you... No, no, no. We want... I mean, I, I check you on YouTube. That's, that's good. So, okay. We, we have something. Me stripping and you singing and maybe why you sing I will strip. I, I don't know. We will see about that later. All right? Okay. But let's, let's get this thing. So... 
My name is Peter. Um, I was uh, born and raised in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, I went to business school there, and then a dream come true was me to uh, go to the States, to LA, and I went to USC, University of Southern California. I had uh, several ventures. Most of them failed. Luckily, I have one which has not failed yet, and hopefully it won't. Uh, it's called SpringTab, so I'm founder of SpringTab. And I love to give value, and hopefully I will be able to do just that today. Uh, and I started vlogging, and I will involve vlogging and, and my journey with that, because it's, it's a hustle. The same thing as being an entrepreneur. And of course, the personal brand is a big part of that. Okay, this was an introduction. I, I, I told that the facts you should know about me, and oh yeah, I remember it was Forbes and Ted that I understood from that. So, you know, these are factual things. And somehow, you know, before that I made a fool of myself, uh, I made some jokes, and this could give you some sort of personal brand. And I brought you a video of this guy. He's also cra way more crazier than me, although he's not stripping. But let's see this video and think about it, how he represents who he is, and his company. Okay, he, he was crazy. You know who he is? Steve Ballmer, the co-founder and ex-CEO of Microsoft. He did all that, right? And I, I was listening to this and, and it kicked me. All of us need that four words. And I started to think, how could I define myself to myself, and this is where, you know, me, myself, and I, actually, the, the title of the talk comes from. How could I define myself to myself in a way that I could also define myself to others? And I figured that ever since I've, I've known myself, I always create for experiences. I loved anything that has to do with some, something that is fun. I, I'm looking for that in my personal life, even if it's like sipping the coffee, it should be a specialty coffee, it should be in a place that we enjoy, then the environment, the interior design is great, I should be with great company or with a great book. And on the professional level, you know, if you want to provide great experiences, either you start stripping or you, do, you end up doing something with strategy, marketing or something like that. So this is why I have the background in digital marketing and what I was doing with a lot of brands is figuring out what the customers want and how can we provide, the, how can we fulfill that need in a way that provides a better experience for them. So it's not like you know, UX as you think about from the design perspective, but creating the experience for the customer that is really memorable. And I get that from, from my, my interest, my enthusiasm about experiences in general. So if I had to define myself, and actually I never did that, so this will be something that I make a fool of myself, I will try to shout like that guy, and, but I, I want you to, to really wave with me because you know when, when I finish the four words, so I never did that. Let's try that. So I love great experiences, yes! <laughs> I never shouted uh, on a stage, maybe to a pillow. Okay, let's move on. Um, how, how will today look like? I will have four parts, but now I'm showing you two circles. And uh, I want you to think about and really see, I know it's not the best resolution. We have colors, we have a shape. And I want you to think 
which is the larger? I will tell you by the end of the, the talk. Any guess now? Are you sure? Is it the same if you look at the red and you try to compare it from, actually I can do this thing, it's very cool. Let me try this. Actually I can do that now. So are you positive that it will be the same or you wanna double check it? Which is bigger? The blue? All right, okay, we, we'll, we'll come, sorry? I love that, I never got that response. White, yeah, why, why? maybe, maybe white is the largest. All right, we will use them for something else now to, to give you the agenda for today, but I will go back to that. So first, I wanna share some food for thoughts for you, the way I think and approach personal branding and, and life in general, and how can I get to a productive mindset. And the reason why I wanna talk about productivity because I believe that our actions define who we are, what brand we represent. So it comes hand in hand. And then we talk about how can we be our real authentic self. And by the end, I will share the secret formula that I will need a lot of volunteers for to um, talk about it and uh, test it on you guys. Okay, let's get started. So food for thought. First, this is a Steve Jobs quote. I'm a, I'm a huge Steve Jobs fan. And basically what this quote says that remembering that you know he's, he's gonna die is the best way to motivate himself when he has to kick out himself from, from the bed and to do things that he loves. And whenever he feels that on several days or on a streak, like in a period, something is not working, he will change because anyway he's gonna die so he, has, he wants to do something that he enjoys. And if we put it in a perspective and we go from the, for the bird's eyes view, then we understand that there is not much to, to, that we can lose, right? Like, we really have to follow that. And if we don't do that, then we will be stuck and all the rest of my lecture will be just a waste of time because actually this this is, this is the thing, like remember that you have nothing to lose and you can really express yourself and this is how you can get fulfilled. And many times when you know, we are in, in a hard situation, we, we tend to, to look, at, with, look at it with a microscope and we analyze all the aspects of it, but, but we, we don't really step back and think about, okay, where are we now, what is the, worst thing that can come out of it. Because most of the times when there is some really difficult thing going on in our lives, it's only temporary, meaning that its effect within a month, within a year, most likely we won't even remember, it won't have a permanent effect of it. So when we, have a, uh, we are facing a hard situation, just write it down. It really helps if you write that down. Mark Twain said that he, he has known a lot of worries in his life. He worried a lot. But the, but the thing is that most of them only existed in his head. That's why it's, it's a very good exercise when we are worrying. Write it down and face what's the worst thing that can uh, come out of it. And here's an extra tip. You wrote it down, you faced it, and then create like an extra column and write down that how can you prevent that and what can you do if that happens? 99% out of the time you will feel content that you will be able to do something. Okay. Feeling unsure, feeling insecurity, this is something that we have to face and we, we have to be vulnerable. There is nothing to be ashamed of if we are vulnerable. Actually, we should embrace it. It's way better to go there and say, hey, I'm really stuck here or I don't know what I'm gonna do or what I'm doing, but, but I have a dream, I, 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 wanna, I, I have a goal, I wanna do that. You know, they say that you have to be out of your comfort zone and life starts there. It's, you can say it's a bullshit, but that's the truth. Like, you have to feel unsure and insecure when playing it safe seems smarter. You know, those are the things when you are on the edge, and of course, it seems smarter to, to step back, but you, you decide to jump. 
And I'm not take, talking about crazy things, like when they say that entrepreneurs are risk takers, I think that's bullshit. Like, on, good entrepreneurs, if you look at entrepreneurs, they are the most risk averse people because they, they count all the situations just with the slide, the, the last slide I had. They face a situation, they think about all the scenarios, and they do everything to prevent that. And what they are looking for is how can I get high reward with low, with low risk? But even though there is a low risk, we have to feel unsecure. And when we are not there yet, we, we are not the brand we want to become, we are not the greatest, we, we still have to lead when no one is following us yet. And that's damn hard. You know, those are the times when you are at home alone and it's dark and, and you posted something or, or you pitched a, an idea, you, you had a presentation at your job and the, the client just, just shits the bed or something. You still got to believe. Uh, how many of you were uh, at the lecture of uh, tell, tell me a story? Okay, not so many of you. So let me, I, I was fascinated with it. I was embarrassed to go to the stage next time, but, but I, feel, I, I hope I will uh, be able to bring value. And since most of you haven't heard that, I can, I can tell some wisdom there. So the guy is, the, the guy who, Pete, who gave the talk, he works for CBS and he creates, he basically creates stories. Instead of ads, he creates stories. And oftentimes when he's wanted to do Instead of a typical product advertisement, he, he pitched an idea to, to, to tell a story instead of an, a traditional ad. They, they, they taught him not to do that, but he just followed his gut feeling. And he said, trust me on this one. At least he can say he tried. And it was a huge success. So when you feel like, yeah, maybe I should feel, follow my gut and I can say that I tried it, maybe that's the thing that you, have, you, you want to do. So find your niche, and we are coming closer to the personal brand and the brand you represent. So how do I define a niche? It's really hard to become the best in the world, like to be the Michael Jordan, to be the Michael Phelps, to, to be the very best in the world. It takes a lot of effort and even more beyond, and there is a great chance for us not being the number one. Like when Michael Phelps was swimming, um, I'm from Hungary and we had a really great Hungarian swimmer. He was always number two. He never won a gold medal, but he's a great swimmer. His goal was to be the number one and he couldn't be there. And that's a sad story, but if we put it in another way and we look at how much effort we need to be in the top 20%, it's not that hard as you think. Being in the top 20% in something is not that hard. It's achievable. You won't be the best in it. There will be way better people than you. But you will be quite good at it. And luckily for us humans, there are not only one thing that we can be in the, the top 20. There are several. So I will use our circles for something else. Right there. This is your niche. So what you need to do is write down the things you love to do and write down what you are good at. Prioritize it, like make an order of the list. So, okay, I like to do X and Y and all the alphabet. You write down as many things as you want and then you create an order of it. And you see, you try to find similarities, you try to find where they overlap. And hopefully, the things that you are good at and you love, which are on the top of your list, you, since you are good at them, you will be in the top 20% already. Or if you start working on them, working on your skill, put in the hours, it won't take that much effort from your side to get into that top 20%. The reason for that is because you love that, right? If we love something, it seems more effortless in a way. So you have your list and you try to find how they overlap. Let me give you an example. I was at a conference and uh, it was about GDPR. There will be a talk today about GDPR, the worst four letters I heard the last year. And there was this lawyer from, from a management consulting firm, one of the big fours. 
he, I think he's one of the best in the field, but he went there, he gave a talk, and he was reading law. Like, his, his slides were full of paragraphs of stupid law things that no one cared about. It was a tech conference, and he was standing here and reading like this. And it was boring as hell. It was important, but so bad. And imagine if there is a lawyer, maybe not as good in his field as he is, but he can present. So he won't be the top lawyer at his law firm in research or, or legislation. But when going to the court or going to conference, and since he has, for example, uh, skills as presentation and other soft skills, and he combined them, like he, he, he is an okay lawyer, and he's an okay presenter. And if he combines that, he will be at the top of the game compared to most of the lawyers. So this is how you, how you need to think about that. Actually, this is how I started vlogging. I did photography before. It was like on an amateur level, nothing special. I had okay pictures, and I love Instagram, so it somehow was in my life. Being an entrepreneur, I have to pitch, I have to present, I love storytelling, so I don't have problem with speaking and trying to form an information into a story. So I was giving this presentation, I had the photography background, and I hate writing. I don't know why, I'm a terrible writer, and of course you have to write like guest posts and articles, things like that. And then it popped me that what if I combine my photography background, working with camera, and my speaking skills, and I start vlogging. And I won't be the best vlogger, but with, from this field and that other, if I combine, I can find my niche. So this is a great exercise to find your niche, and this is how you can build up and then create your personal brand. One, one reading before we, we finish this part, uh, I recommend to you is from Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I love the title, it has nothing to, the book has nothing to do with it, but it's a catchy title, isn't it? Who, anyone who has read it? Great, awesome. Okay, I wait for the last photograph. Okay, moving on. Get into the productive, productive state. Who here feels that they are very good at procrastination, being a lazy ass? Those are my people. Okay, at the back. Okay, I, I see some hands. Okay, th this will be for you guys, and uh, for the rest of you, hopefully, you will enjoy these tips as well. Okay, procrastination. I love this meme. I will put a picture in it later, right? I mean, this, this is what we do. This is what we are really good at. This is our niche. So when, whenever I find myself in this, first, I remember that Steve Jobs quote, and I'm like, okay, I, I have to do something about it. But that doesn't kick me. So there is this thing called get over mantra. It's very harsh, but you just have to tell yourself to shut the fuck up, get over yourself, and do it anyways. For me, this is going to the gym. Usually I go to the gym in the mornings. I hate going to the gyms. I hate being in the gym. But finishing my workout is one of the best experiences. And the rest of the day is, I don't know, if I, it's like if I drank 10 coffee, or I don't know, I would be on cocaine, although I never took cocaine, but I imagine this could be it. And in order to get to that productive state, which I love, which I love to be in, all I have to do is shut the fuck up, get over myself, and do it anyways. Really harsh on yourself, but you are doing it for yourself. Okay. Next thing that you can do if you don't want to be that harsh, that you just tell yourself to do it, do it, do it, do it. And if you keep telling yourself and you know you're lying on, in your bed and, and you, you are covering your face with the pillow and you don't want to do anything, and you just start telling yourself that do it, do it, do it. It doesn't work all the time, but oftentimes it's like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to do it, I don't care. This is something else, but I wanted to address it, and it also shows your personal brand. And this is asking for help. A lot of times we, we play this, you know, there is this thing we, we say that you, you are like an, an angry bear, or like an, an angry person, that you, you, you come up with these excuses in your head, 
and you just don't do something because you think it's, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that cool. Like, I, I don't want to embarrass myself. And the only reason we don't ask for help is because we want to avoid that uncomfortable, embarrassing situation. But if you put it in a right way, there is nothing to be embarrassed of. The very easy trick when you are asking for help to give a, give a card out to the person. Meaning that when you ask for a favor, hey, could you do X and Y for me, John? But it's totally fine if you can do it. I know that you are super busy, but it would me, help me a lot because I'm just whammed. But you are giving a card out. So if you put it that way and you think about asking for help is one of the best way to make a connection with people and represent your brand. So you, when you face that difficult situation and there is someone involved, you can just tell them, hey, could you help me out here? Like, I'm feeling that it's not going the way we imagined it. Um, in, in English, they say that put the elephant on the table. So am I doing something wrong or, or it's not a fit, whatever? In, it can be in your personal life, it can be in your professional life. This is a magical sentence, help me out here. And this, this builds a connection, this builds trust, if you can represent that. There is another sentence, if you do ask for help or if you arrive on a stage at your life where you have to manage people, you have to work with people, and keep holding your phone because here is the sentence. Name, could you do task by deadline, name, please. This has everything in a, from a psychological pers perspective. It has everything. You, you ask someone with a name politely. You, describe, you have to describe the task very specifically. Even you should give a reason why you are asking someone or delegating to someone. Then you repeat their name. You t sorry, you t very important. You're not, you are not just asking or delegating a task. You put a deadline. Very important to put a deadline. And then you say name and please. Oftentimes it puts people in a position where they can be charitable and it can just help the workflow and again, builds your brand. And there's, I don't know, I, I was crazy like standing on my hands, you know. You, you really should try to become this weird and authentic self of yourself. Whatever you have in your head, you just, have to find that and find a way to express yourself. So, what the personal brand is. It's a way to say who you are without having to speak. I love this. I don't know where I read that. It's, it's not my, I have, have to tell that, but just, just think about it. Your brand is a way to say who you are without having to speak, just standing on your hands or something like that. And it resonates with style, and, and I like this quote. Uh, let me read it to you. Style is knowing who you are, what you want to say, and not giving a damn. You know, you hear it from a lot of badass actors and famous people, and, and maybe your friends or the cool kids on the blog, that I don't give a damn. And I, I love that part. You should know who you are, what you represent, and what you want. And when you are in terms with knowing who you are and what you want, and you don't care if something happens, like maybe here is someone and they are like, why the hell is this guy standing on his hand? Is it funny? He's not funny at all. I really don't care. But I, what I care for, that hopefully I will resonate with some people and provide value to them. And that's all I care about. Because I know who am I, what I want to achieve, and Sometimes I do give a damn, which is a bad thing, but I'm really working on not giving a damn. So since we are in a marketing conference, uh, let me walk you through it. Anyone uh, recognizes this? Okay, I heard one yeah, probably. But most of the people, hopefully not. And uh, this is a very odd one. I love it and I love to bring it. So when we think about communication and all the parts of communication, this says it all. And the, the last one will be about the brand. So when marketing, you know, we are marketing them ourselves. We say that we are really cool at something. We have a great product. We, we are doing X and Y and work with me, buy my product, whatever. 
if we have a large budget, we can have a PR person and hire someone to say that, trust me on this one, you want that product. You know, it's like the wingman, like, you know, when they say, have you met Ted in How I Met Your Mother? It's the same thing. You have someone telling, talking good things about yourself, you know, PR. And when you have a way bigger budget, you use advertising. You, you will have the budget and the resources to say that I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, buy the product, buy the product. And by the end of the time, you won't even know why, but you want to buy that product. Or hopefully not, you won't be fooled by advertisement. And that was a takeaway from uh, this morning's talk, that now, now we, we actually have a window of opportunity. Like, we as consumers, we know when we are sold to. We know when there is an advertisement and they want to sell a product to us. We don't want that. We are willing to pay not to listen to advertisement while we are being entertained. I love that thought because, you know, I pay for Netflix, I pay for Spotify, and I pay premium because I don't want to listen to an ad. I just want to have a great experience, right? That's my four, letter, uh, four words. And but when being entertained is what the consumers want, then we should shift the focus and create advertisements that share a story and they entertain our target group. And this is where branding comes into the picture when, you know, without having to say anything, the customer comes to you and say that, yeah, I understand what you, who you are, what you want, what you represent. And I want your product, I want to work with you, because your actions speak to themselves. So this is how I see in like the general communication, this is the best I can describe that and why I believe branding is one of the most important things to focus on. So you are the brand when you work for a company or an agency, you work with brands. The same analogy that we learned in school, the, you know, the four Ps, all that bullshit, or the SWOT analysis, you can do it for yourself. Like, analyze yourself and create, okay, what are my strengths? strengths? What are my weaknesses? What, what is the opportunity I have? And what threats are in my life considering my personal brand? So the easiest way to look at that, that think about yourself as a brand. Ask your friends, your coworkers to describe you if you were a brand. I like to play this game that when I go to a restaurant or I go to a hotel or, or I see a cool gadget, would that be me? Like, how would I look like if I, if I were a hotel or a restaurant or a product? It's a nice way to put, put it. So be your weird, authentic self, but even better put it, be your authentic and unapologetic weird self. It's the same thing as not giving a damn, put with, with other words, like be unap unapologetically weird. This, this will really shift your brand if, if, you, if you move that last mile. Anyone knows who that guy is? Actually, two guys. Shout in. Actually, I think it's... No, it's not written there. Well, very small. Well, no, because there is actually, not, I cannot zoom it, but these are the Nicet brothers. Anybody heard from, uh, oh wait, I, I don't want to show that yet. So, <laughs> um, anybody heard about Casey Neistat? Okay, better, yeah. So, this, this is the production that, what a surprise, it failed. So, the, the story that, that Casey has, that they were, like, more than 10 years ago, they had this idea that they, they were 20-somethings, and they pitched this idea to a network, to HBO, that, hey, we are two brothers, and what if we would film our weeks, and we would create a production out of it, and every week there would be very real, raw material of our lives, and HBO bought it. And think about like 20 something in some things in New York and they get millions of dollars for production just to film what they are doing. That's the top of the game, but they failed. It was on a network like it was TV, traditional media, and that was vlogging. Like if sometimes he shares his old stuff, it hasn't changed that much. Of course, we have drones now and we have better image quality, but the story, the narrative he uses, it's literally the same. But the channel, 
the distribution. That's why they failed. And fast forward a decade, and last year I made this screenshot. He had 7.2 million subscribers. He just passed 10 million a few months ago, and now he already has 10.3 or even more today, I don't know. He stayed true his, to his brand. He didn't change just because it wasn't the right time. He led. He led when no one was following him. He failed, but he stayed true to that. And when he found a channel where he can distribute his voice, and of course he tested it, tested it, and stayed true to his weird and authentic brand, I mean, just check this guy. He's this weird, really, really weird, authentic guy. And I really hope so, I, I, I believe so, that in every of us, there is this weird guy. Don't copy anyone. It's not about, I want to be the next Casey. I will be the next vlogger guy. And you know, I, I have my vlogging and I start hoverboarding and do all that shit. No, I want to I wanna be me. But I want to be inspired by him and by many others. And actually, I think about him as my mentor. I never met the guy. I hope I will. But he cannot say no to me to be my mentor, because I can learn from him and I can get inspired from him. So find your mentors, dead or alive, it doesn't matter, and get inspired for them and, and help them to find your weird, authentic, unapologetic self. Let me drink a little. So the secret formula. I just want to give a brief idea of how I define branding, and uh, then we will move to the formula. So the brand, you know, is, is, is your action, I, actions. I already said that. So whatever you do is your brand. Like, you know, Elon Musk says, you work 100 hours a week or 40 hours a week. It's four months versus one year. But I know myself, I don't want to work 100 plus hours a week. But what I know that you, could, you should give more, even though that it's not your job. Like uh, yesterday I was uh, picked up at the hotel by Eva and she told me that she was the product manager on the app for, for the, the weekend media festival. And now she was picking me up and showing me around. And she said that I already did my job and now I'm helping wherever I can. She's giving more. That's, that's a brand. So you, you, you could be the go-to guy. And when people need help or support, you could be just there for them. So when you think about, you, you represent the brand which people associate with persistence with, or helping with. Like, I'm there, I'm doing it, I'm grinding, I'm doing the hustle. You wanna be that brand. That's why your brand is your actions. So here, here is just an example. So. If you don't know Neil Patel, Neil Patel is one of the smartest SEO experts and well-known uh, SEO experts in the world. So let's say you are no one, but you are interested in uh, SEO. You are just starting up. You can say that I'm eager to learn the secrets of SEO and following leads of Neil Patel. So you put yourself next to Neil Patel. Then let's say you, you read his stuff and you, you tweet him, you comment on his articles, and then all of a sudden you can say that, hey, I'm the guy who pitched Neil Petto with a trick and got featured on his blog. Then you, this is your brand. And you know, as you move forward and you become a, an established expert in the field, then you will be able to say something like, I'm an award-winning SEO specialist who helped Microsoft to raise le leads by 13% or something like that. You can always work with what you have and use it as your branding. As for me, for example, and this is a very important part, thing in the digital life, I bought all those domains. I couldn't buy santo.com, which is my last name. Um, it, someone already has it. I could buy it for, I don't know, five or, or eight grand. I didn't want to buy that. But I want to use the same handles for my professional or my public profile. Um, so. Anybody here who doesn't have their LinkedIn with the custom URL, with your name or something, you should do that. 
Okay, I, I love this one. Persistent work is the best brand to represent. Be the one who anyone can turn to and count on. When you define your brand, you could use something as uh, the, the um, Y principle, the Gordon Circle principle from Simon Sinek. His TED talk is one of the most viewed of all time, so if you haven't seen it, or if you haven't seen it in the last three months, please go and watch it. Basically what he says that most of the companies do uh, say what we do and how we do it, but they totally forget their whys. And on top of that, you shouldn't start by saying what we do, you should start with the why and go from inside out of the circle. This is how they created Apple. Apple is a great example of that. Like, they say that whatever we do, we challenge the status quo. We do that by creating amazing customer experiences and beautiful products. We make electronic devices, laptops, iPods, things like that. And speaking of that and representing your brand, why did this guy wear the same shit every day? On one hand, of course, it was about productivity. He didn't want to waste anything to think of every day. He just took what he decided to wear. He had a lot of them, and he, he didn't have to think about it. But then again, it represented his brand, not because he wore the same thing every day, but the idea behind, and people buy the idea. And that's a signature look. And there is a game that you could do when you figure out, and I'm not telling you to wear the same type of clothes every, every day, but what you can do is do the hanger game. So basically, you change the hanger, and you put all your stuff there, and you leave a shelf out, and whenever you wear something, and you put it back, then you put it in the reverse direction, the hanger, and you put it to the empty shelf and let the time do the work for you. And in half a year or a year, you will realize that, I don't know, 80% of your clothes you haven't worn in the last three, six or month or 12 months. And then you can stick to, like, create some sort of signature brand. And all the rest of your clothes, you can uh, donate it, give it to a charity, sell it, something. It will build up to your brand. And the magical sentence, we arrive to it while you come. And this is, this is what I wanted to share with you. And this is the positioning statement. If you nail this single sentence in an introduction, in a talk, in a meeting, and it's not just in general of your whole brand, in any kind of situation, if you really understand what's behind that, you can put it in good words, then you will be able to communicate your personal brand or your message in the cle clearest way that will get to the recipient. So the way it builds up, you start with the target audience. Who are you talking to? So to target audience, my brand, my product, whatever, is a category, whatever that category is, that provides, and you have to, don't think about functions, think about the benefit. Say one or two benefits of the product, and then you say your why. You say, we do this because whatever. So let me give you an example. And this is about Whole Foods. Whole Foods is a very organic and healthy uh, food chain, a grocery store in the States. So what they say, we are not for everyone. To health and eco-conscious consumers, this is our target. We are a grocery store. Everybody knows what a grocery store is, so your product category should be as simple as hell. So we are a grocery store that sell the highest quality natural and organic products that support. So that was a feature. I don't really like that part. But the next, what they support, vitality and well-being. This is the thing. Like, if, if, you, if, you, if you care about your well-being, you're going to buy their products. And why? And this is some, some where their slogan and they play with their names, but we believe in whole foods, whole people, and whole planet. And it says it's all. So this is what we're gonna, we're gonna work on today. And um, I will give you two examples, uh, how you can think about. So when you are creating your niche category, one of them is Subway, the other is Tom's, the shoe that I'm wearing, it's a shoe company. So Subway, I mean, that's nothing but healthy, right? Like <laughs> anything but healthy, sorry. But what they say that if you want, a fa so when you are searching within a f fast food restaurant, then we will have the least fat compared to others. They are not talking about whole foods. They are talking about fast food chains, right? 
and there, this is their category, this is their niche, then if you go for fast food, they are the best option. Or Tom's, they want you to get involved. That's very important. And when they say that, if you buy a pair of these shoes, you're actually buying two because we're going to ship another one to a kid that doesn't have a shoe yet. And I buy that. I, I, I like that mission. OK. So with that, I tell you that I love great experiences. This is me. This is, this is what I, I work hard on to represent. And going back to the circles that um, I showed. Oh, sorry. Go back. Whoever, I, I, loved the, I loved when you said, okay, there it is. I loved when you said that it's the white, I will use that, but actually they are the same. But when I was talking about that, and a lot of people were like, yeah, of course they are the same, but some people said it's the blue, some said it's the red. When I keep on telling you that, but think about that, and I could have been more persuasive and more manipulative, and we, try, we, we, we arrive to believe that, yeah, they seem pretty identical, but maybe the blue is a little bit bigger. And no, stay true to your, to your, to your gut feelings. Okay. Mm. I will have to exit to go to edit mode. And what I would like to ask you, so I have the positioning statement here, and I will need volunteers. I want to know who you are, what your brand, like try to tell me this positioning statement, and we will work together to, to create a better one. Who wants to try it? OK, I, I, I figured that that's going to be the case. So, I'm very glad that the organizers invited me. And this is, this is a very small thing, but in Hungary, we don't have a sea, and I love water. And I went for a swim today, even though I don't really swim. And I love that there are rocks uh, rocks uh, in the sea, and it's all clear blue, and, and I, I just love it. And I brought some. I, I spent like 10 minutes to pick them up. And uh, this, is, this is a memory that we can share. Like, these are nothing special, right? But if we think about it, that I could get this from an experience since I'm here. And if anyone uh, wants to share what, they, what their positioning statement is, and they are willing to do that in front of the audience, and hopefully I can give you not only the value that it will be better, but I would be very glad if I could give you a rock. You want to rock, right? Like, uh, you, you don't want to do that. Yeah, a big round of applause. OK, hey, man. Can, can we get a mic for him? Palet mic. Yeah, ah, radi sve. Fantastic. Thank Thanks, you. Hi. Thanks. Hi, Thanks. I'm Peter. I'm Christian. Hi, Christian. OK, what is your positioning statement based on this? So I will not talk about my job, because my job is boring. <laughs> So I'll Don't talk start about, with that. I will you talk you about, can look at that. We have it there. I will talk about my passion, which is photography. So we have awesome. something in common. Like-minded. So you want me now to state how I would present that yes. passion? Yes, and I will make notes. Okay. So to photography lovers, of course, which is very broad, I think. So we should maybe reduce it to X photography lovers. X. I am creating X photograph. Act. 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 Okay. Yeah. Act photography. You, um, my product is uh, photography that I make on analog devices. That would be the functional part. <laughs> like I shoot with a very old camera on film. Because I want to present the communion, be communion between nature and the human body in a, let's say, very aesthetic way. And what is your, your, your why? Like, if you go, why do you want to do that? In order to present a different perspective about the things we see. Uh, come again? In order to present a different perspective about the things we see around us. I think basically that's the goal of every photographer to somehow try to draw attention to the world around us through his eyes. All right. Okay. 
Did I get it right? Like this is. Yep. All right. Okay. Let's let's try to work on it. So what do, what do you guys think? Actually, I think it's it's really good. Like as as you put it, like I would try to work on the target audience. So okay, there is act photography, but how would you narrow it down? Because as as you said, that you you use a very old analog uh, methodology for that. So maybe we c we could put it there and 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 use something like that. I think it's very broad. I don't know. Art photography is like that's the target group generally. If you create, photography. yeah, I, I would put something next to it to define it. But let's leave it to that. Um, there's something to think for you. And I really think that analog photography stands out. Like you, you do analog photography. That that's what you do. And of course, you you, you do it for people who who are interested in act, and that's, that's a good combination. So now I understand who you are talking to and what you are doing. And the, the part that you, you, you want to, so this is how I put it, like you want to show the beauty in, in human and nature, some sort of like that mixture. And I think that's a good combination that you could do, go there. And that's why I asked back why again. I, I, I missed it for the first time, but giving a different perspective of the things we see around us. If you combine it with analog, like you are going back to a time in this digital age, and this is, this is where I would put it, like, of course everybody wants to see beauty around us, but why don't we step back and see it in a way that no one wants to see around now? And this is where I, would, I, I, I think I would put, uh, play around with. So let me, let me try to rewrite it. I don't think I will be able, you know what, I will, OK. And of course, this is the workshop part. So if you are interested in this, please stay. If not, that, that's totally cool if you, if you want to go and you know, have a break and enjoy the sea. So this is where, where I come back. So I really like old school and old fashioned. So I would play around with that. But maybe not old school, but old fashioned it's, is even a better way. So like the old fashioned way, that, uh, the, the act photography lovers, we do analog photography, I, I love that part, and we show the beauty in human and nature that we shouldn't forget. I think that that could be something that you can catch them, that you, you want to show something that we would forget, like it's not in our life yet, and, and this is why they should be working with that, with you. And I put the different in the end. So to present the perspective of the things we see around us in a really different way, or maybe I would put like I would put old school to the top and then old fashioned, or maybe old fashioned there and old school to the end, and then actually it would play around. So if you remember, there was this whole foods, whole people, whole planet. It could be like the old school and the old fashioned. So this is an old fashioned act. Photograph lovers, we go on because we want to see, uh, show, uh, present the perspective of things we see around us in an old school way. You could, is it something that, was this helpful to, to, to yes, narrow sure, it? Sure, sure, because I, uh, first of all, I never tried to present it like this, to pitch it to anyone. I, I love it, just really. A hobby. <laughs> cool, okay, um, feel free to make a photo of it, and uh, thank you very much, Christian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now you're going to sell a lot of nude photos. <laughs> I think that we're Thanks. about to finish. So yeah, yeah we, we don't yeah. have time for more. If anyone yeah. is... Shy, I will hang around here and I'm happy to do like a one on one or something like that. And I think because it's time then. Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you very much, guys, for being here. Thank you. Hvala svima.